Okay, let's give both both choirs another hand, y'all. That's it. Okay, that's a little better. Praise to the Most High God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone that's here today in the name of Jesus. Peace to everyone that's watching us live on the internet and listening in on the phone lines. <clears throat> and as always, it's good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. And today we're going to deal with a lesson It's titled The Water of Life. And it's not based on this heat wave that we got going on. Because they, they say there's a drought here in California, but I find that hard to believe. A state that's right next to an ocean got a drought. Don't believe it. But we're going to deal with this lesson. It's called the water of life. And the water, this water of life is none other than the word of God. Because if you drink of this water, you will get eternal life. And this water is free. It's free water. You don't have to buy it. I mean, who would have thought that nowadays, you know, you have to buy water? But this water is free. And anything that's free, people should want to take advantage of it. I mean, you put some free food out there, I guarantee you, you're going to have a long line and people are going to be wanting to eat. But this water, this word of God is free. Everybody got it. But the thing about this water is it comes with some stipulations. You have to believe it. And if you believe in this water, then you're going to do what this water says you're supposed to do. And then you will get eternal life. And we're going to show you that a lot of people don't want this water, even though it's free. They think it's too hard to do, to drink this water. But you can drink it. But you just have to believe it and act upon your belief. So we're going to start off, we're going to do it, we got a reference, I want to read something because we got this guy that's coming, supposed to be the head of the Christian church, but they have a dark history. And I'm going to read this, it's, it's in the handout, everybody got it, I'm going to read this first paragraph. It's called the Vatican Archives, you know, they got some secret vault down there where they got all this stuff that they don't want nobody to know, get them kids, man, somebody get them. Um... But we're going to read this. So read this first paragraph right here. Go ahead. Rome. Rome, January 22nd. Is it on? The Vatican permitted scrutiny of one of the most notorious periods in Roman Catholic Church history on Thursday when it opened the archives of the department once known as the Inquisition. Scholars now will be able to study cases such as that of the astronomer Galileo condemned by the Inquisition for claiming the earth revolved around the sun. So that was the Catholic Church. They condemned this dude because he said the earth revolved around the sun. I guess there was mass heresy back then to say something like that. But go ahead. And Giordano Bruno, a monk burnt for heresy in 1600 in Rome's Campo de Fiori Square. So they was burning their own people. A monk burned him up for heresy. Go ahead. Vatican officials say the secret files, dating between 1542 and 1902, will yield precious few juicy secrets. The church officially rehabilitated Galileo in 1992, for example. But the archives do contain some surprises. Opened on Thursday alongside the Inquisition archives was the infamous Index of Forbidden Books, which Roman Catholics were forbidden to read or possess on pain of excommunication. So they had these books out that good Catholics weren't supposed to read, okay? But go ahead. They show that even the Bible was once on the blacklist. So the Bible, the word of God, this free water was forbidden for them to read. Amazing. And they have 1.6 billion followers, and they were forbidden to read the Bible. Go ahead. Translations of the holy book ended up on the bonfires, along with other heretical works because the church, whose official language was Latin, was suspicious of allowing the faithful access to sacred texts without ecclesiastical guidance. Protestants, who split from the Roman Catholics during the Reformation in the 16th and 17th centuries, were allowed to read holy works directly. 
the index of forbidden books and all excommunications relating to it were officially abolished in 1966. So you couldn't read this Bible because the lay people didn't have enough knowledge to understand what thus said the Lord. So they had to have some priest, some biblical scholar, somebody who wasn't supposed to have no wife. He was supposed to let you know what thus said the Lord while he's over there looking at your little boy. But the Bible was forbidden. The word of God was forbidden for somebody to read. But let's get into this lesson. Matthew 5. So keep that in mind when this guy shows up and they're going to build him a throne like they always do. Matthew 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Matthew 5 and 1. Title of the lesson is the water of life. Okay, read it. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. So here's Jesus now. This is, this is what they call, I guess, the Beatitudes. I don't even know that's even in the Bible, but this is what they call it. But go ahead. This is what he taught them. Go ahead. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So blessed are they which hunger and thirst after what? Righteousness. They shall be filled. In other words, they're going to be fed. If you hunger and thirst after rising, you're going to be fed, not with no physical food. The Lord is going to spiritually feed you. If you're hungry, he's going to give you that bread. If you're thirsty, he's going to give you that water of life. And we're going to show you that. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Remember that blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. People hunger for a lot of things. And they may get a little blessing here and there. But who's it coming from? If you're not hungering and thirsting after righteousness, I guarantee you your blessing is not coming from the Lord. Because your mindset and your actions are going to show it. Isaiah 55 and verse 1. Okay, read. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, Buy wine and milk without money and without price. So, ho, oh, everyone that thirsts, has come ye to the waters, and he that has no money. That's why the books say this water is free. It's free. You don't have to, you're coming with no money, just go ahead, keep reading. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? So why are you spending your money for that which is not bread? If you're hungry for righteousness, go somewhere where you're going to be fed some righteousness. Go ahead. And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in So practice. hearken means listen. Listen to me. Listen diligently unto me, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. What are you going to be eating that's good? This word of God. Go ahead. Incline your ear and come unto me. Incline your ear. That means listen. He's always telling you to listen. Go ahead. Hear. And your soul shall live. Here and your soul shall live. Go ahead. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. So if you hear and you listen diligently, the Lord is going to make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Revelation 21. Revelation 21. So this water is free. All you got to do is drink it. And it's not that hard to drink. Just open your mouth and drink it. It's crystal clear. 21, one verse, verse 6, read it. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. I will give unto him that is thirsty. Blessed are they that thirst after righteousness. I will give unto him that is a thirst, the fountain of water of life freely. This is free. If you're thirsty for it, it's free. Just go over there and take a drink. It's cool and refreshing. Guaranteed. 
You drink this water, you live forever. And that's some water I want to drink. We all should be thirsting after that. Isaiah 12. Isaiah chapter 12. We've been drinking that poison for so long. When good water comes along, we don't even know what it looks like or what it tastes like. We're scared of it. Isaiah 12. And verse 1. 12 and 1. Okay, read. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. So I will trust in the Lord and be not afraid. The Lord Jehovah is my strength, my song. He also is become my salvation. Verse 3. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of what? The wells of salvation. And what's that water you drawing out? None of it in the word. And let's go show it to you. John chapter 4. John 4. John chapter 4. And this is Jesus at the woman at the well. And pay attention to what he told her. John 4 and verse 1. John chapter 4 and verse 1. Okay, read. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So now Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman, so apparently Samaritan Jews didn't have no dealings with the Samaritans. But Jesus, the woman told Jesus, Why are you talking to me? And Jesus said, Look, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is that saith to you, give me a drink, thou would have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. And what is that living water? None other than the word. Go ahead. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? So apparently it went over her head like a bullet. She didn't know what he was talking about, living water. He, she said, look, you don't even have nothing to draw with. What, what is this living water? Where is it coming from? Go ahead, verse 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? So she's still on the physical thing. She's still on this physical water. Go ahead. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. So he hit her with it again. Whosoever drinketh this water that I'm going to give you, will never thirst again. Go ahead. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So whoever drinketh the water that I'm going to give him, that water shall be a well of water within him springing up into everlasting life. So this water is going to create water within you. So if you get that word in you, what is it going to do? Create some fruitful works. That's that living world that's springing up into what? Everlasting life. Because you're going to be judged on your works. Go ahead. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. So once he said that, she was like, man, give me some of that water right now. Skip down to verse 19 and read it. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. After he told her all his business, all her business, put her business out on the street, you know, she was like, look, you're a prophet, right? I perceive you're a prophet. Go ahead. 
Our fathers worship, worshiped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye not know what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Read that again. Ye worship ye not know what. Not what. Read it again. Ye worship ye, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. So salvation is of what? Of the Jews. What do we read in Isaiah 12? The waters of salvation. Put your trust in God. Go ahead. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit. And if you're going to worship God, you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. The key word is truth. You can't worship God in spirit and in truth on Sunday. Because that's not the truth. Sunday's not the Sabbath day. The seventh day of the week is. So you worshiping God in a lie. Like he told her, you worship, you know not what. Skip down to verse 31 and read it. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him, him ought to eat? So now they, they knew Jesus hadn't ate all day, and they went out to get some meat. So when they came back, they was like, you know, Master, you need to eat. And Jesus said, look, I got meat to eat that you don't even know, know nothing about. Went over their head like a bullet. They said, who gave him something to eat? Now, he ain't talking about physical meat here. He's talking spiritual meat. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. So he told them, look, my meat is to do the will of the Father, because he sent me and to finish his work. Skip down to verse 39 and read it. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this in, is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So now the woman was telling the people of Samaria about Jesus, but they didn't believe her. They only believed when Jesus, they talked to Jesus personally, and they said unto the woman, Now we believe. Not because of your sayings, but for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. He spilled out them living waters to them. And what was it? None other than some teaching. His word. He taught them and they believed. Let's go to um, Genesis 2. Genesis chapter 2. So this word of God, it was free way back here in the beginning. Didn't cost nothing. Genesis 2, and pick it up at verse 7. 2 and 7. Okay, read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So the Lord created man from the dust of the ground. Go ahead. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. So the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Skip down to verse 15 and read it. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So this was man's first job, a gardener. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. So he commanded the man, and this is a commandment. He said, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Go ahead. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thereof thou shalt surely die. So you can eat of every tree in the garden freely with no problem. It's just that one bad tree over there. Don't mess with it. So you got some good trees and you got one bad tree. So what did man do? Went straight for the bad tree. Go to Genesis 3 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. 
Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So even the woman understood. Every tree of the garden we may freely eat. But the tree that is in the midst of the garden, don't touch it. Go ahead. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So Satan totally contradicted God. He told the woman, you ain't going to die, your eyes just going to be open. So when he told her that, look what she saw. Go ahead. And the woman, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband and with her, and he did eat. So she saw the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to desire to make one wise, so she took of the fruit. So the fruit started looking good. That conversation was good. And she went for it and gave it to Adam, and he did eat. Skip down to verse 22. So the Lord passed sentence on him. And now this is what he did. Verse 22, go ahead. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord said, Behold, the man has become a one of us to know good and evil. Now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and live forever. So man could have lived forever. He just ate from the wrong tree. So now he's tainted. So the Lord had to get rid of him. Verse 23, go ahead. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So now you could freely eat. Now you got to work. You got to till the ground now. Go ahead. So he drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So he drove them out and placed cherubims to keep the way of the tree of life. So now, Eve saw that the tree was good for food, wise. It looked good. You don't know an apple is rotten until you bite into it. It looks good on the outside, don't it? But you bite into it, it's got a worm. Look at that golden cup that that woman had. It's a gold cup. Whatever is in it has got to be good. But it's poison. It may look good, but it's poison. Let's go to um, John chapter 6. John chapter 6. So Jesus is handing out free water. But don't nobody want to drink it. They think there's something wrong with it. This water tastes so good it couldn't be free. It's got to cost something. No, it's free. Just drink it. 6 and 22. John 6 verse 22. Okay, read it. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one wherein unto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that, the Lord had given thanks. So now this is right after Jesus fed the 5,000. So they're looking high and low for him to get some more of that free food now. They had a fish dinner. And it was free. So now they're looking for him again to get some more fish. Go ahead. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me, not because you saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. So now they was looking for Jesus not because of the good works he was doing. They was looking for the free meal. Okay? If people were really hunger and thirsting for righteousness, this place would be busting open at the seams. But people don't want it. They want the, the fish dinner. Go ahead. 
Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth until everlasting life. So don't work for the meat that's going to perish. Work for the meat that's going to endure for everlasting life. Go ahead. Which the Son of Man shall give unto you. Who's going to give you that meat? Jesus. Go ahead. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. It's that easy. All you got to do is believe. Just believe. Go ahead. They said therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? So now they're asking for a sign that we may believe. Dude, you just got fed. Wasn't that enough? That was a big sign right there. Go ahead. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. And as, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. But my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. So they said, Jesus said, look, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. That true bread is none other than Jesus. For the bread of, the bread of God is which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. And then they said, Lord, give us some of this bread. Skip down to verse. No, keep reading. I'm sorry. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So Jesus told him, look, I'm that bread. I'm that bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And the only way you're going to get your fill is to crack this book open. And read what thus saith the Lord. Go ahead. Skip down to verse um, 39 and read it. 39, yeah. No, wait a minute. 53, I'm sorry. 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. Now he went from eating bread the eating flesh and drinking blood. Go ahead. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. So you got to eat Jesus. Not physically, but just eat his words. Eat the words that he's telling you. Go ahead. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? So when Jesus started talking about taking a bite out of him and drinking his blood, then he went back to the bread. They was like, man, we don't know what this dude talking about. Go ahead. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words that, this is the, that Jesus speaks unto you, they are spirit and they are life. What is that word of life? None other than the word. The teachings of Jesus. What's wrong with that? People try to make it so hard. All you got to do is believe and act on your belief. Show Jesus you believe in him. Listen to what he say and just do it. Let's go to, um, keep reading, 64. All the way to 64. Okay, keep reading. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he, and he said, therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of the Father. So no man can come unto Jesus except it were given unto him by the Father. You have to want this. The Father put it in you to want to follow Jesus. That's why everybody can't get this. This is, this is not for everybody. And it's evident around the world. You can see. 
Go ahead. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. So Peter said, we, ain't, we don't have nowhere to go. You got the words of eternal life. You got that water we need to drink. You got that bread we need to eat so we can get eternal life. That's why, you know, when people come through here and, you know, going off into the little tangents, going crazy, don't bother me. It don't bother me. Because, hey, this is just, maybe this just ain't for you. Maybe the lost books are for you. So you can get lost in them. But this, I'm about this book right here. Because this book has the words of eternal life right here. Let's go to um, 69 and read it. Go ahead. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the son of the living God. And we believe and are sure, 100% without a doubt, that Jesus is the Christ. Let's go to um, 1 John chapter 5. Flip over to 1 John. First John chapter 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 John 5 and 1. Okay, read it. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. So whosoever believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Go ahead. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So by this we know that we love the children of God is when we love God and do what? Keep his commandments. Verse 3, read it. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. So what's the love of God? Keeping his law. Keeping his commandments is the love of God, and his commandments are not grievous. It ain't hard. There's nothing hard about keeping these commandments. Go ahead. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So if you're born of God, that means you believe in Jesus and you're keeping his commandments, you can overcome this world. And believe me, we need the true and living God to overcome this foolishness that this world is going on today. You need God. If you don't have God, I guarantee you're going to go right along with it. No matter how good you might think you are, you're going right along with it. Go ahead. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. Okay, skip down to verse Well, keep reading that. I'm sorry. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because of because the spirit is truth. Okay, skip down to verse 10. Go ahead. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. So he that believeth on the Son of God hath witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Go ahead. And this is the record that God giveth to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So you got to believe. You got to believe. You got to act on it. And at the end, you will get your reward, which is eternal life. Go ahead. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Okay, let's go to um, Jeremiah 2. We read a little too much, but that's good, though. You're supposed to stop me, man. Jeremiah 2. So you got to believe. The water's free. You drink it, and you act on it. Jeremiah 2, and two verses, 13 and 14. Okay, read it. For my people have committed two evils. 
They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So now he's talking about Israel. Israel, my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. They've forsaken Jesus. He's the fountain of living waters. Turn their back on them and created, hewed them out some cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So look at your condition. Verse 14, read it. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? You're supposed to be on top. Now you're serving everybody because you turned your back on the fountain of living waters. That was Jesus. Go to um, Psalm 36. Psalms chapter 36. And pick it up at verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Psalm 36 and verse 5. Go ahead. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep. O Lord, thou pre preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life, and thy light shall we see light. O continue thy loving kindness unto them that know, know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride That's come. good, that's good. So for, for with thee is the fountain of life, and thy light shall we see light. Why is the Lord always creating... His word with waters. The fountain of life. Verse 8. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. Let's go to um, Isaiah 44 and show it to you again. Isaiah 44. You got to want this. You have to hunger for this word. And the Lord will fill you up. He will fill you up. And get to the point where you can never get full of this. You will never get full of this. You're going to hunger and want more and more and more. That's if you want it. A lot of people get complacent. No room for advancement. But the Lord will deal with you too. Isaiah 44. And pick it up at verse 1. 44 and 1. Okay, read. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus said the Lord that made thee, and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thy offspring. So he said, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. That's a lot of water. But you got to be thirsty for it, though. Blessed is he that hunger and thirst after righteousness. So the Lord said, he's going to pour some water on you that's thirsty. Go ahead. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. So when the Lord pour that word on you and you start to get some understanding, some brothers change their name. They change their name to Israel. What else? Go ahead. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. So that's that good word. That good word to make you change your name after the Lord because you are his people. My father didn't want me to change my name. He said, I don't care what religion you're in. Don't change your name. <laughs> but that's all right. I like Brian anyway. John 8. John chapter 8. We got a nice room back there for them babies. John chapter 8, and pick it up at verse 30. 
Okay, read. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So in order for you to be a disciple of Jesus, you got to do what? Continue in his word. Plain and simple. That's it. Go ahead. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So if you continue in his word, which means you continue to drink that water, then you're going to know the truth, and the truth is going to make you free. Go ahead. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? So they answered him and said, Look, we be Abraham's seed, and was never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? I guess they forgot they were slaves in Egypt. And also under the Roman rule, too, right here. Go ahead. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. So if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Hold your place right here. Let's go look at some of the works of Abraham. Go to um, Genesis 18. What did Abraham do that these clowns who say they was following Abraham didn't do? Because if they did what Abraham did, Jesus said, y'all wouldn't be trying to kill me. Let's see what Abraham did. Genesis 18. And pick it up at verse 16. Genesis 18 and verse 16. Okay, read. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may be bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. So what was Abraham going to do? Keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. What did Jesus say? If you continue in my word, you are my disciple indeed. You got to continue in his word. And he said Abraham was going to do the same thing. Command his household to do justice and judgment and walk in the way of the Lord. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians 3. Galatians 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Galatians 3 and verse 6. Okay, read. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So he believed God, and how did he show God he believed him? He acted upon it. The Lord told him to do this. He did it. He told him to get up out your father's house and go to this land. I'm gone. Sacrifice Isaac. Let's go. He believed them, and they counted on him for righteousness. Go ahead. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So they that which are of faith, faith in who? Faith in Jesus, are the same as the children of Abraham. You got to believe, and you got to act on your belief. Go ahead. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So this is for everybody. This water is free. It's for Israel. It's for the stranger. It's for whosoever will let him come and drink of this water freely. And how do you know you're drinking of that water? Because you act in order. You believe, and you're doing something to show the Lord that you believe. Let's go to um, back to John 8 and finish the rest of this conversation that he was having with these Pharisees 
John 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse, we're going to start at 39. And read back down into it. Go ahead. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. So we saw the works of Abraham. Abraham wasn't going around killing innocent people. He was believing in what thus said the Lord and was doing it. Go ahead. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word? So he told them, Look, you, don't under, you can't understand the truth. And some people, they just don't get it. They just don't get it. So all you can do is plant the seed and keep a stepping. Somebody else may come along and ward it later if it's the Lord's will. But some people, they just can't see it. Go ahead. Ye are of, of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. And the reason they can't see it is because Satan got a hold on them. He got a hold on them. Plain scripture makes no sense to them. It's like reading Greek. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning, and a bold not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is the liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? So he says, I tell you the truth, and you believe me not. We try to tell people the truth all the time, and they don't believe it. They don't believe it. Not only do they, they don't believe it because they really don't believe you. And in essence, you ain't doing nothing but reading what thus said the Lord. So in actuality, they don't even believe the Bible. But they're looking at the person that's trying to get them the truth instead of listening to what the person is telling them. It's like trying to go to your family members now. All they're looking at is how you used to be. And you know, how can you, you can't bring this to me. You don't know nothing. But listen to what does, don't look at me. Look at the words that are coming out of my mouth. But go ahead. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. <coughs> then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep me my saying, he shall never see death. So he told him again, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. And we're talking about the second death. But you got to keep his sayings. Because if you don't, I guarantee you, you got a spot in the lake of fire. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5. And we're going to read a couple of verses here. We're going to show you what this water is. The water of life. The water that if you keep and drink, you'll get eternal life. 24. Ephesians 5, verse 24. I mean, 25. 5 and 25. Yeah, 25. Go ahead. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So that he might sanctify, he's talking about the church. Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. How did he clean up the church? He washed them up with the word. Let's go show it to you. Ezekiel 16. Because the church is Israel. And when he found Israel, they wasn't in the best shape. So the Lord had to wash them up. Ezekiel 16. And that's how we get washed. With that word. That's a true brainwashing. Ezekiel 16. 
We're going to start at verse 1. Okay, read. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. And say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother a Hittite. And as for thy na nativity, in the day that thou wast born, that thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor sw swaddled at all. None I pitied thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. So now he's doing the uh, history on Israel. They wasn't nothing nice in the beginning. It says, None I pitied thee to any of these unto thee to have compassion on thee, but thou was cast out in an open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. Verse 6. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee when thou was in the, thy blood, Live, live. Yea, I said unto thee when thou was in thy blood, live. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and enter into a covenant with thee, said the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Then washed I thee with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. So when he passed by, he looked upon him, there was a time of love, and he washed the blood from him. How did he wash him? With water. And what was that water? None other than the word. That's how he cleaned his church up. He gave them good laws, good statutes, and good commandments. And that was supposed to be their wisdom in the sight of all nations. Let's go to um, Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30. So he took his church and cleaned it up with some water. That good water, fresh, clean. Purified. Mountain spring, whatever you want to call it. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. Okay, read it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. So I have said before thee life and good, death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments. In other words, keep drinking this water. Keep drinking this water I'm giving you so the Lord can bless you in the land where you go to possess it. Verse 17. But if thine heart turn away so that thou will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. But if you get full or your thirst is quenched and you don't need this water no more and you start doing other things contrary to the word, look what he's going to do. Verse 18. I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. So you got a choice to make. You're either going to choose the water of life, or you're going to choose that golden cup full of abominations. The choice is yours. Let's go to... um. 1 Corinthians 2. So you got to make a choice. You're going to drink the free water or you're going to drink that stuff in that gold cup. I'd rather take the clear plastic water I can see. I can see this water. I don't know what's in that gold cup because you can't see it. But once you start drinking it, it's over. You've been poisoned. And you're going to die twice. 
1 Corinthians 2. And we're going to start at verse 12. Okay, read. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So we receive what's not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of God, that we might know the things that are what? Freely given to us of God. This is free. This water is free. Go ahead. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with the spiritual. But the natural man receiving not the things of the Spirit of God. So the natural man, he can't get this. Like I said, this truth is not for everybody. They can't handle it. Go ahead. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because they foolishness unto him. People think that the seven, keeping the Sabbath is foolish. Because they do Sunday. It's easier to keep Sunday. They think it's easier to keep Sunday than it is to keep the Sabbath. It's easier to keep the Sabbath than it is to do Sunday. Guaranteed. It's real easy to keep the Sabbath. You just got to want to do it. And when you want to do something, it's a whole lot easier. Because you like it. I did not like going to church on Sunday. My mama drugged me. And then when I got grown, still didn't like it. But I was just going through the motions. But go ahead. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who, for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. That's right. We have the mind of Christ. Go to um, Revelation 3. We're going to start wrapping it up. Revelation 3. This is a pretty short lesson. I may have to throw about eight more scripts in there. Revelation 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Revelation 3. And 20. Okay, read it. Behold. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. So Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. The door of your mind. Okay? He's knocking on your door. He got some free water. All you got to do is open up. Open up and take a drink. You ain't got to look through the peak hole, you know, to see who it is. It's Jesus. And he got some free water in his hand ready to give to you. Go ahead. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. So when you drink this water of life, you got to overcome. You got to endure. You got to keep drinking and keep drinking and keep drinking until the end. Let's go to um, John 3. Hmm? John 3. Man, stay out my lesson, dude. Go to where I tell you to go. John 3. John 3 and verse 1. Go ahead. There was, a, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now, this is Nicodemus. Now, he's going to see Jesus by night. Go ahead. The same came to Jesus by night. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Jesus said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And that's another lesson. But go ahead. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So Jesus said, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And what is that water we just read in Ephesians? None other than the word. You have to get this word in you and endure so you can get that spiritual body at the time appointed. 
But that water, you have to be born of the water. You got to get this water in you. You got to drink it and get it in your mind. Get your brain washed up really good. Endure. And you can get your reward when the Lord comes. So let's look at it. Six, Six read it. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That ain't even in the lesson. Is it? I'm going to get you, man. Stay out the lesson. Go to John 13. John 13. Flip over to John 13. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 13 and 1. Go ahead. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the feet of disciples and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So now Jesus washing their feet. This is at the Passover. Okay. He washing their feet. Go ahead. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. And Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, what I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. So Peter didn't want Jesus to wash his feet because he held Jesus up on a higher standard. Okay? So it was beneath Jesus to wash his feet. So he told him, Look, you would never wash my feet. But Jesus said, Look, if I don't wash your feet, you can't be a part of me. Verse 9, go ahead. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. He said, Well, Lord, not my feet only, but wash my hands and my head. He wanted a full body cleansing. He wanted to be just washed up totally. With what? He wanted that word. He wanted to be clean. It ain't in the lesson, but read verse 10. Go ahead. Jesus said to him, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. But ye are clean, but not all, speaking of Judas. But let's go to 2 Kings, and let's show you something. Let me show you something at 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter, chapter 5. So you got to get washed. That word is what washes you up. You get it in your mind, it washes your brain out. And then you go through the physical act of the baptism. And then you start walking in that newness of life. But let's look at this guy. Let's look at Naaman. 2 Kings 5 and verse 1. Okay, read. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. So Naaman was a great man. But he was a leper. Verse 2. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. So now he had a, a maid from Israel. Go ahead. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria? For he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, and go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. So the woman from Israel told her mistress, and she went in there and told him, saying, Look, there's a prophet in the land of Israel. He can heal you from this leprosy. Go ahead. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have... Therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes, and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive, that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of leprosy? 
Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. So now he thought that, that Naaman was coming to do something else. But the man was serious. He wanted to get healed. But the king of Israel, you know, he had something else on his mind. First, hey, what did Elisha tell him? Go ahead. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Elisha said, when he heard the king and rent his clothes, he said, Man, why you rent the clothes up, dude? Send him to me. Verse 9, go ahead. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. So he came with his whole entourage, and stood right at the door at the house of Elisha. Verse 10. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times. And thy flesh shall come again to thee, so and thou shalt be clean. So Elisha didn't even go out the door. He sent a messenger and said, look, man, go down to Jordan and watch seven times and everything will be all right. Verse 11, go ahead. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. So he was looking for some dramatics like they do nowadays. And these so-called healing ministries. It's all a big show. He gave the man some simple instructions. Go down the River Jordan and watch seven times. You'll be all right. He didn't got to come out and clap no lightning. And in the name of the Lord, God of Israel, pop, 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 you healed. And he just fall back and start shaking. No. He told him, go take a bath seven times. Go ahead. Are not Abana and Farpar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. So he started naming some other rivers. Are not Abana, Abna, and Parfar rivers in Damascus better than all the rivers in Israel? He wanted to go somewhere else. Send me somewhere else to get washed. I don't want to go wash in Jordan. Send me to some clean water. But go ahead. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father... If the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, wash and be clean? So he told him, look, if the prophet told you to go climb a mountain and jump off of it, would you have done that and be clean? All he told you to do was something simple. Just go wash and be clean. Go ahead. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. So when the, when the servant talked some sense into him, after his anger had subsided, now he can listen to some reason. He just told you, man, just go down there and wash. It's that simple. So he went down there and he became clean. Did the water do it or did his obedience do it? Because he could have sent him somewhere else. But he sent him to Jordan something real simple. Believe Go down there, get washed up seven times, and you will be clean. And that's all the Lord is telling us. Just believe. Believe and do what I say. That's it. You don't have to be nothing dramatic. It's that easy. Just drink this water. People try to make it so hard. It's not that difficult. You just have to hunger for it. You have to be thirsty. Because I guarantee you, if you're not thirsty, you're going to still put the tree in your house and try to justify it. You're going to still color them eggs and try to justify it. You're still going to go to church on Sunday and try to justify it. Make up all kinds of excuses. The law is done away with and Jesus did it all. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever excuse they come up with for not wanting to just drink this water and do what Jesus said. But they're not hungry and they're not thirsty. And you can tell by their actions. We finished that? Okay, go to Psalms. 52. And I got three more places. So blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness. The book say you're going to be filled. Everybody sitting here has some kind of testimony from where they came from because they was hungry. And the Lord fed you. And here you are. Still eating and drinking. Psalm 52 and verse 1. 
Okay, read it. Why boastest thy, thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue devises mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than speak righteousness. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Now this is somebody that ain't hungry or thirsty for the word. He's doing his own thing. Wickedness. Go ahead. God shall likewise des destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengtheneth himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it, and I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. Okay, go to Proverbs. So he said, I'm like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. You got to keep trusting, no matter how bad it gets. Keep trusting in the Lord. Proverbs 3. Flip over to Proverbs 3. Keep drinking that water. Don't never stop. Three and one. Okay, read. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days, long life and peace shall they add to thee. So my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Keep drinking. Go ahead. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. And write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou, thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. All your mind trust in the Lord. Don't never stop trusting in God. Don't ever waver. No matter how bad it gets, you got to keep trusting. Let's go to um, John 7. John chapter 7. And one verse, verse 37. John 7. Hmm? Yeah, 37 and 38. Okay, read it. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. So Jesus stood up and said, Look, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Go ahead. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So he that believeth on me, which is Jesus, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow Rivers of living water. They, it ain't nothing coming out your belly. If you believe on Jesus, you're going to show Jesus you're gonna, you believe him. And your actions will show him. That's that living water, that word. You're going to show Jesus you believe in his word, so you're going to act on it. And you're going to bring everybody else into it too. You are compelled to tell somebody about this truth, about this living water. Because you can't sit on it. You can't. You have to say something when somebody says something stupid. So let's go to the last place, Revelation 22. Revelation 22. And verse 16. Okay, read. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is athirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. So when the spirit and the bride said, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is thirsty come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. And I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name.